Hi, it's Michael Grogan, and in this video tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how we can use the Psycho PG2 library to connect a Python environment to a SQL database. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be loading the database into our Jupyter Notebook, and we're also going to be committing queries. So the purpose being to learn the basics of how to interact the Python environment with a SQL database. Now, You'll notice that we're using the Psycho PG2 library here. And all this means is that we are going to be connecting um, Python to a Postgres database. So you have SQL as a language, but you also have um, sub languages such as Postgres SQL, MySQL, etc. So Postgres is going to be the one that we're going to be using here. And you'll notice as well that we have all of the code already in front of us, so I'm not going to go and um, type it out line by line. The purpose being just to show you um, at a high level how we can uh, make Python and Postgres interact with each other. So if we look at the first half of this code here, this block of code here, you can see that we are importing our Psycho PG2 library. We're then making a connection to the database by inputting our user credentials. So um, the actual data from the database, if I just bring you down here, you can see that we have a weather database. So we have a certain number of dates. We have world cities, and we also have in Celsius, we have the decimal values for the, um, the weather reading in each city. So this is the, um, the um, data that we have already imported into Python. So just to go through the code step by step. So we're importing the psychopg2 library. We're using psychopg2.connect in order to input our credentials and then come up with the um, connection. We're activating the connection cursor. So this is what we're actually going to be using to execute queries on the, um, on the database. So as opposed to executing queries directly in SQL, which you'll be familiar with if you regularly work with databases, instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna be using Python to actually execute those queries. So the first query that we've executed here, we've used cur.execute. So we're selecting the three variables from the, um, from the database. So we're saying select date, city name, average temperature in Celsius from cities, which is the name of our table. So we're using rows cur.fetch all to get, the, um, to get all the data. And when, when we actually input rows, this is what we come up with, the actual output from the, um, from the database displayed in Python. Now, as I mentioned, we want to be able to actually um, input queries into the SQL database from the Jupyter Notebook itself. We don't want to actually manipulate the, um, we don't want to have to go into the database every time we want to change something. We just want to do it from Python. So I'm just going to take the hashtags away from this block of code here. So. We're using our cur.execute um, command again, and we see that here we're embedding a, um, a, uh, a uh, SQL command. So a SQL query, we're inputting insert into cities, we're defining our variables, we're defining our values, and we're inputting a date, we're inputting a city, and we're inputting the, um, the temperature. In Celsius form, and then we're using con.commit to actually commit our query, and then when it comes to um, displaying our data once again, because obviously we want to update this down here, we're going to say right, we're selecting all of our data, taking into account that we've already executed a query that has inserted an additional set of data points in there, and we're using rows cur.fetch all again to be able to come up with our data. So. Let's go ahead and run that code and let's see what we come up with. Right, so you can see that once we have actually executed the, um, the um, query, we're coming up with 
the new date, the new city, and the new um, temperature reading that we had inputted into the into the query. Now, this is a very simplistic example. The idea just to show you how you can get a connection between Python and SQL up and running. But basically, the beauty of this is that if you're working with a database and you have all your data contained in the SQL database, but you don't want to go into the SQL database each time you want to actually manipulate it. You have your Python code and you just want to run the odd query along with any other code that you might be running. Using PsychoPG2 allows you to connect to the database and using cur.execute, using the cursor, allows you to commit queries to the database which are permanent and are saved to the database once you commit them. So usually once you've um, once you've done all that it's standard practice just to close your connection at the end of the um, at the at the end of all the queries you've run. So we're going to run this again and you can see that our data is no longer displayed and this means that we have um, closed out our database. So that's just a uh, simplistic example of how we can use the um, PsychoBG2 library in order to um, connect Python and SQL together. There's a, um, an example of this on my website as well as the data. So feel free to use this example and try and replicate this for yourself. And um, yep, many thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.